question six. This is our exercise tutorial. Now the way this works is step one, I'll ask you the question or I'll pose the question. You pause the video and have a go at the question. Step two, continue to play the video. I'll provide a hint that gives you a little bit of assistance if you were able to answer it straight away. Again, pause the video, then play the video on. I'll give you the answer and how we got to the answer. And then finally, step four, continue on to the next question. So here we go. Here's question one. Michael Faraday said that the magnitude of an EMF, that's an electromagnetic force, induced into a conductor depends on the conductor's length and the relative motion between the conductor and a what? So A, electrostatic field, B, Faraday's field, C, a magnetic field, or D, a nuclear field. So pause here. So think about how does induction work? What does it mean when we talk about inducing a voltage and a current into a, into a conductor? How does that work? So here's the answer. It was Michael Faraday said it is a magnetic field. You need the length of the conductor in the magnetic field and relative motion between the conductor and the magnetic field. In other words, move the conductor or move the magnetic field or move them both, but they've got to have relative movement between them to get an induced voltage. Two, if the speed of a conductor moving through a magnetic field is increased, the induced EMF will do what? A, increase, B, remain unchanged, C, decrease, D, alternate. So A, B, C or D, pause here. Here's the hint, is the relationship proportional or inverse? So you've got to think about what are the relationships as you change something, is it going to go up or is it going to go down in response? So proportional or inversely proportional is the hint. Here's our answer, if the speed of a conductor is moving through a magnetic field is increased the EMG the induced EMF will also increase, therefore it is directly proportional. So speed is increased, voltage is increased. Question three, the relationship between induced EMF, field direction, conductor, mo ro motion and can be determined by. So the relationship between induced EMF, field direction, conductor motion can be determined by A. Fleming's left-hand rule, Faraday's law, Lenz's law, or Fleming's right-hand rule. So pause here. Here's your hint. Don't get your right and left mixed up. So which one is it? So it's Fleming's right hand rule it demonstrates the relationship between the induced EMF, the field direction, conductor motion and can be determined using that right hand rule. Question four, if you increase the field strength in a DC generator this will cause what to happen? A. Decrease in velocity. B, increase in EMF, C, increase in velocity, or D, decrease in EMF. So if you increase the field strength in a DC generator, what's going to happen? Here's your hint. What are the factors that will affect an EMF? So think about what are all the things that will affect EMF, and are they proportional or are they inversely proportional? So will they cause something to go up or cause something to go down? So if you increase the field strength in a DC generator, this will cause the EMF or the electromagnetic forces to go up. It's what a generator is all about, it's how it works. If you increase the field strength, the EMF will go up. 
increase. Five, the turning effort is referred to as what? So question five, turning effort is referred to as Newton meters, force, Newtons, D, torque. So pause here. The hint, turning effort is a special type of force. So what type of force is it? The answer was the turning effort is referred to as torque. So it's rotational torque. It's a kind of force. Newton is a force. Newton meters is force over distance. So all those things A, B and C were all forces, but the correct description is torque, is rotational force. Six, the power produced by a conductor moving in a magnetic field is represented by which of these expressions? So A, B, C or D, A, B multiplied by V multiplied by L, B multiplied by V multiplied by L multiplied by R, C, B multiplied by V multiplied by R, or D, B multiplied by L multiplied by I. Current. So here's the hint. Um, what is power equal to current multiplied by the voltage, if you remember? So the answer is the bottom one, B, L, V, I. So B being the flux field, L being the length, V being the voltage, I being the current. So that gives you power. The operation of a transformer relies upon what? A, magnomotive induction. B, large flux density. C, a low reluctance. D, magnetic induction. So A, B, C or D, pause here. What transfers energy between the primary and secondary windings of a transformer? So that's your hint. What transfers the energy between primary and secondary windings of a transformer? Here's the answer. Magnetic induction. You could maybe even argue that B is correct. Large flux density, but of course that's how the energy is transferring. But in particular, it's magnetic induction through that large flux density. So saying a large flux density is only half an answer where magnetic induction is a complete answer. Question 8. Determine the force operating on a conductor that's 0.2 of a metre in length and carrying a current of 4 amps in a 0 0.6 Tesla field. So a little bit of a calculation here. Think about what formula you need and pause here. Here's the hint, F equals B, I, L. F being field, L being length, I being current. So F equals B times I times L. So here's our answer. Our B is our flux density. So that's come from up here, flux density. Our L is 0.02 of a metre, which they gave it to us in metres. Remember, it has to be in metres. And then finally, the current is 4 amps, giving us the 4. So 0 0.6 times 0.2 times 4 gives us 0 0.48 newtons. Don't forget the units. Don't forget the units. It's in newtons. Question 9. Determine the acting force operating on a conductor who has a length of 0.3 of a metre in length and carrying a conductor current of 2.3 amps in a 0 0.65 Tesla field. 
So similar to our last question. Again, same equation. The hint is f equals b l times i. So I have a force b l times i, 0.65 multiplied by 0.3 multiplied by 2.3 amps. In this particular case, we end up with 0.45 newtons. So again, it's force measured in newtons. 10. Determine the EMF in a conductor moving in a field of 0.6 Teslas, which is 2 metres long and has a velocity of 10.6 metres per second. So a little bit different this time. Determine the EMF. So we want to know what the EMF is. Not just a force like the last two previous questions, but this time we're interested in the EMF. Pause here. Here's the hint, V equals the field strength multiplied by the length multiplied by the speed. And here's our answer. Our field strength, 0.6, tesla, 0.6 for Tesla. It's two meters long, has to be in meters. And the speed, this part up here, the speed, must be in metres per second, which they gave it to us already in metres per second, so it has to be in SI units, which is 10.6. So that gives us a voltage of 12.6 volts induced. So that brings us to the end of Lesson 6, our exercise tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about electromagnetism.